In this episode, I wanna show you how to make an AIP or autoimmune paleo friendly coconut cream parfait, which is a perfect breakfast option, whether you're on the go or just need something quick in the morning. So I think one of the harder things on AIP is breakfast. Because you can't have eggs or a lot of the porridges and just different things that you typically can have on a normal diet or even on paleo or even Whole30. And that can really be a problem when you are on the go and busy and need to take something with you or like if you're like me in the morning things are crazy trying to get my kids out the door and just trying to get ready for the day and all of that stuff and I really don't want to have to think about breakfast. I think some of the typical meals I do are the sweet potato bowl that I shared a couple episodes back and I'll link to that up here and then also something like a soup uh, because it's usually easy um, with a sausage and probably the soup and sausage I prepared during a batch cooking session prior to the day that I'm eating it. But today I'm going to share with you a different option which you may not have thought of and it's a coconut cream parfait. It's a little bit kind of like a panna cotta, um, more coconut jello if you will, and it kind of can be as thick as you want or as thin as you want. Um, it's also maybe kind of like a, a yogurt if you make it pretty thin. It just doesn't have the tanginess. You could of course put in some uh, probiotics and uh, let it ferment for a few days and get some tanginess, but that's not what I'm really going to show you. I'm just going to show you how to quickly make this. Um, you'll just heat it up, put it in your refrigerator, and then you'll be able to dish it out into individual serving containers and put any toppings that you want on it. I'm going to show you how to make a pumpkin pie version, but you can try all different kinds. And in the Autoimmune Collective, I actually have a whole entire list of uh, several different flavors that you can do. And before we get started, I'm going to point out too that I'm using this Native Forest Simple Coconut Milk because it has no guar gum. Uh, you're going to want to look for AIP compliant coconut milk on this. Um, a lot of times they actually have the thickeners like guar gum. So just look out. I believe Trader Joe's and Thrive Market and some other brands also have guar gum, guar gum free ones as well. So just make sure you're looking for that. And then I'm also going to be using canned pumpkin. Uh, you can roast and puree your own pumpkin if you'd rather, uh, but I like this organic pumpkin from Farmer's Market. I get it off of Amazon and it is just certified organic pumpkin, nothing else. And then finally, I use the grass-fed beef gelatin from Perfect Supplements. Uh, there are other brands that you can use as well. I just really like this one because it doesn't smell bad and it really works well in the applications that I need. All right, let's get started. Okay, because we're using gelatin, we need to heat this one. So I'm going to put the entire can of coconut milk into a saucepan. And then you want about a cup of uh, canned pumpkin. So I just kind of take half of the can, it's about one cup, just put it in there. It does not have to be exact. And then I'm going to put in a teaspoon of gelatin, a teaspoon of maple syrup, one teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of ground ginger and a half teaspoon of mace. Now mace is the AIP equivalent to nutmeg. It's the red outer coating of the nutmeg plant so uh, it tastes a lot like nutmeg and it uh, really gives that flavor so it's really good for pumpkin kind of applications. And then I'm just gonna whisk this all together just until all the chunks are pretty much gone. And now I'm just going to heat it up on the stove until hot to the touch. I typically just stick my finger in it and when it feels hot, then it's done. Uh, you just want that so that way the, the gelatin activates so that way when it gets cooled, it will kind of gel up. Okay, this is now hot to the touch. So I'm gonna turn it off the stove and then I'm going to pour it into a quart size mason jar. You can put it into like a Pyrex container or something. Uh, the pint size mason jars might be a little small for this because you added that extra cup of pumpkin, but a uh, quart size works really well. Just pour it in there. Okay, now I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to put this in the fridge for at least four hours. You can do it longer, but uh, you need a minimum four hours to let this gel into a thick kind of uh, mixture instead of just this liquid right now. 
Okay, it's now the next day and I have let my thing rest for, you know, overnight uh, for more than four hours and it is ready to go. I also made a version with a tablespoon of gelatin so you can see the difference in the texture and consistency. Okay, so these are the two different ones I made. You can see with this one, this is the teaspoon of gelatin. It's a little bit runnier and I'll show you a little bit of a close-up in a minute, but uh, you can just see by looking at the thing that it's runny versus this is the one that's uh, with a tablespoon of gelatin and it is not runny at all. It's very, very thick. All right, so here's that close-up. This is the uh, one that weighs the teaspoon. So it's kind of a consistency of what you would probably cons like think with yogurt. Uh, just not very thick, but just a little bit runny. And then the one with the gelatin, it's quite thick. You can see it's... Uh, just like not runny. So let me show you a side-by-side -side comparison. So you can see this one's kind of runny and lumpy. This one is just thick and just a thing. So neither of them are wrong. It just kind of depends on what you like, what your preferences are. So go for a teaspoon if you really kind of like it yogurty, and go for a tablespoon if you like it really thick. I personally go back and forth between them. There is really no like one that I prefer over the other. It just depends on what I feel like having that time or whatever. And maybe some of the recipes I like a little bit better, thicker and vice versa. Just play around with it and see what you like. So now for the fun part, it's the toppings. So when I originally did this pumpkin pie particular coconut parfait for the uh, recipes that I did for the autoimmune collective, I topped it with some diced pears, some cinnamon, some raisins, and a little bit of honey. For this one, I'm going to saute up some diced apples with a little bit of coconut oil, sea salt, and cinnamon, uh, just until soft, and it just gives it a wonderful smell and quality. I'm gonna put that on top of uh, the uh, base that I've already made. All right, so what I'm doing here is a very, very like basic recipe. I'm not really kind of using measurements. I'm just taking a little bit, like a teaspoon of coconut oil, putting it into a hot pan. I'm gonna let that melt. And I've already diced up half an apple. Um, you can dice as much as you want, but I'm just doing half an apple. Uh, and then I'll probably add like a teaspoon of cinnamon and like a pinch of sea salt. And just saute this for five, 10 minutes until these get soft and really are, are fragrant. And then while those are cooking up back there, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what I do to store them uh, once I put them into individual containers. So if you're gonna just have them right now, um, if you're gonna just scoop it out of like these quart size containers, uh, you can put it into a bowl. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, you'll see if you look at my blog post and in the Autoimmune Collective, I have used these little wet jars, but they're not very practical if you're gonna store it for later because there's no lid that really kind of seals on here easily um, unless you're actually canning it. So these are just more for show. They're fine. Uh, you can see what you're eating, but not really practical for uh, storing it for later. If you are gonna store it for later, uh, if you have one of these like screw top yogurt jars, these work really well, or a small half pint canning jar works really well, or you can even use like one of these small Pyrex things with a lid. Um, don't use a lid that's this chewed up, geez, that's pretty bad. Um, but just, you want something that like, it's gonna be a small individual size portion so that way you um, just can have your meal uh, ready to go if you need to go somewhere or just ready to pull out of the fridge and eat. I also like to eat these with a like sausage piece for breakfast. So I like to batch cook a whole bunch of sausages. I will just make them, put them into patties, and then either cook them in the uh, stove or in the oven, and then put them on a freezer tray in my typical individually quick freeze method. Put them on the freezer tray, let them freeze, and then once they're frozen, take them off and put them into a plastic bag. So that way, when it's time to have the sausage, all I have to do is just take one out and let it thaw, or I can just cook it in the microwave and it's ready to go. So I have my sausage and I have my little jar of parfait and I can go anywhere or just straight to the table and have an easy meal without having to worry about it in the morning. If I'm gonna do this, I like to make up a whole entire uh, one of these and then this will serve like four-ish breakfast, uh, which is good for like a week so that way you don't have to really think about it for a week. And then all I do is just kind of spoon it out into the jar and then add the toppings and screw the lid on. It's just, it's really easy. That's it. 
If you want the full recipe, I will link to it below. And if you want to get uh, all the variations uh, that I've made for the Autoimmune Collective, I will also link to that site below. Uh, it is a paid membership, but it gives you so much stuff for AIP, uh, learning how to do it and all this kind of stuff. So uh, I will link to that below as well. And I will see you next time.